On the battlefields of the east, Ukraine tries to repel the Russians. But on the western frontier, it's engaged in a different sort of war. Here, the authorities are trying to stop their citizens from getting out. They're needed in the army. It's short of recruits. But there are thousands of Ukrainians, like these men caught near the border with Romania, who do not want to fight. We make contact with a man preparing to flee through the mountains of western Ukraine. He calls himself Ivan and says he can't wait any longer. I'm not being disloyal. Everyone understands this. Many of my friends have already gone. Anyone who has their opportunity is leaving. And in a groundbreaking interview, we meet a smuggler who helps young men flee before they're conscripted. Stas says he's not ashamed of what he does. People simply aren't ready to die. Young people aren't ready to bury themselves alive. So they turn to us for help. A lot of people are turning to us. Some call them traitors. Others say they're weak. But every day, the authorities catch men suspected of dodging the draft. And the number of deserters is expected to climb as the government lowers the enlistment age from 27 to 25. In December, the army said it needed up to half a million more troops. It's a very sensitive matter, said President Zelensky, but he has bowed to the wishes of his generals. Two years ago, a great wave of volunteers raced to sign up. But exhaustion has set in at the front, and the army is struggling to replace them. These images show members of 3rd Brigade fighting for their lives in the city of Avdivka. At their recruitment center, we found a few men and a woman making inquiries. Some apply to join specific units before the military makes the decision for them. Mikola is about to begin basic training. Of course, it's unpleasant, but uh, it's the harsh reality, I believe. Uh, whether you like it or not, uh, if you want to be useful, you're going to have to uh, like do whatever it takes. Have you told your friends that you're doing this? Actually, no. I didn't. Uh, well, I mean, no, I told my best friend, and uh, she was surprised because uh, it's not common, obviously, to, uh, to actually act and not just talk. Um, but she wished me luck, of course. The recruitment officer, Sergeant Koval, lost his left arm at the front. I asked him whether it puts people off. If candidates are deterred by seeing my injuries in the flesh and choose to stay with us, well, they're our people. But if they don't realize what could happen, then they're just not for us. He is matter-of-fact and unsentimental, like some of his colleagues nationwide. <laughs> Recruitment officers have become increasingly aggressive, pulling men off the streets when they're suspected of avoiding military service. <laughs> But these methods provoke real resentment in Ukraine. And that feeling may grow. A major mobilization bill is moving through Parliament, and that may allow the army to summon recruits via email. But Ivan's not going to wait for that. There are people who will guide us through the forest where we are now. I can't say how it's happening, but I know there is a passage we can take. I just need some peace, you know. I want to live for myself first and foremost. He's really nervous, very, very jittery, but he's not going to change his mind. I mean, his mind's made up. 
Ivan will pay $6,000 to escape. The smuggler told us the cost has soared as he pays his contacts to look the other way. In the past five months, it's been very hard to work because border controls are tightening. They're checking everything. You know, it's easier to swim across than doing it by foot. Is it a business? Is it about helping these young people? I mean, why are you doing this? He didn't want to answer. The defense of Ukraine rests on the shoulders of middle-aged men. They're battered and bloodied. Many need relief. But thousands of Ukrainians don't think it's their responsibility. The government will have to persuade them. John Sparks, Sky News, in western Ukraine.